Hey guys, I just did a replay analysis for a lower MMR player that was attempting to learn Naga Siren, and I think it turned out to be a great introductory course on exactly how you can use illusions to the fullest and the steps that you should take to learn how to use micro heroes and that have summons or illusions in order to maximize farm on the map. So let's go ahead and get into that replay analysis. Banana slam jam. We got ourselves an 1100 carry Naga Siren says, Learning Naga, I have about 10 games played. Most of them I have been stomping with her, but this one I lost. Let me know how I can play better. Absolutely fantabulistic Expialidocious, my friend. We shall do that. So early game, what I do with Naga Siren Illusions is I check if they have a ward. So I put the illusion like uh, like where my mouse is, then where my mouse is. Within tower range, just to check for wards. It's a really good use of your illusions. It's insanely powerful, as long as the nighttime pregame. She pretty much do it on like every hero that has an illusion level 1 or a summon. It's just good. So you're against Sand King. Uh, pretty chill lane. Not much you can do to this guy, but he can't really shove you out of lane. You just can't really do much to him. So a lot of defensive aggro. Seems like you've got that down. A lot of defensive aggro. Very good. Very, very good. I probably wouldn't go Wraith Band against Sand King. Uh, he has, like, no physical damage. You're not getting harassed. Uh, I would just go straight treads. It's not, like, a big deal. Small investment, but a uh, little thing to consider. You're not really trading at all, right? So you're against Sand King Tinker. This is a really rough Naga Siren game. I'll say that much. Uh, if you go, like, standard items, you're probably gonna lose. You know, this is a game that I would most likely go Radiance in a pub. And that's because if you don't go Radiance, you generally will need to send two Illusions to Creep Waves. And they have... They just have heroes that so easily kill your Illusions if there's multiple ones. Like, Sand King, Jakiro, and Tinker are just so good at killing your Illusions if there's two of them. So, I... I that's why I go Radiance personally. If you go, like, very standard Naga Siren items, I think you lose because you're against Tinker Sand King. Um, your hero will just be kind of useless. It is what it is. Um, so I can rewind a bit, see what happened here. Um, yeah, so you did the whole thing against Sand King, where you fight him on top of creeps that are low. Uh, he actually doesn't hit you, never mind. Okay, what happened here? How do you die? Okay, so we just, yeah, okay, so you went back up. It's just that simple. It's a tough lane. You gotta be very careful with your hero's positioning. Not a big deal. That's just something that comes with time. A little bit of Miss Micro there. Uh, whenever you're trying to clear uh, waves really fast, send one of your illusions to the range creeps. So that you're riptiding the range creeps. So I have just tab and send one to this creep. And then that'll clear the wave much faster. So it's good that you're like, I don't want to interact with the Sand King. I'm gonna push out the creep wave and I'm gonna go jungle. That's good. Go clear the stack, kill the centaur first because it stomps. Really important you kill the centaur before it stomps again. Rough. Whenever you play illusion heroes, that's very important to consider. So yeah, that actually cost you a shit ton that you didn't do that properly. The whole illusion micro at the, at the wave and then not... Uh, killing the centaur. So you're in a lane where you're pretty much like not allowed to walk up. Your less is what you're learning. You're thinking you're allowed to play the lane right here. Um, and as long as like both of the enemy heroes are there, you just can't do that. So you let the lane push into you and then you jungle and come back to lane. Um, if they actually allow you to push the creeps uh, like you did that one time, it's great to go jungle the hard camp and do what you did. But little things are costing you a shit ton this game. These two deaths are just slightly over overly aggressive on your hero's positioning and then um honestly it's like a 300 gold swing what happened at that hard camp so that's like a pretty big deal so the centaurs the hell bears all these creeps that use spells they cast them when there's three units so you should really be keeping that in mind it's really important that you let your illusions tank for you rather than having your hero tank the whole time these little things are going to add up a ton you just took like 100 damage while farming that neutral camp okay uh, you really need to stop doing that. I would say right about now is when you're supposed to start separating your illusions from you. So like here, you should summon illusions and then send two of them here. It's like really important that you start doing that ASAP. It's basically, you'll understand the threshold. It's kind of get a feels for things. But it's when two of your illusions can clear camps is when you start separating them. So what the ideal setup is, is that once that can happen, it's a lot of times, first off, when you're going to splinter your farm. So in this case, your plan is to kill this and then go back towards mid. Like, that's what you're going to do. So sending illusions away from you is, like, super important. It wasn't that big of a deal prior to this because you were just farming this, then this, then this, then this. And you cleared it all by the minimark. So it's actually good to let your hero get all the experience 
if your illusions kill creeps without you nearby, you don't get the uh, experience. So, but in this case, like you're clearing this camp, and then you can send two illusions here, and then run a hero and another illusion over here. So make sure you watch my illusion video on YouTube if you haven't already. It, make sure your hockey setups are correct um, for Naga. Because that should be pretty easy. Send two illusions one place and then... Uh... My number one recommendation is to go into a private lobby and start microing your illusions. It's just not acceptable to send you and your three illusions with you everywhere. That's just like a waste of your time. It really is a waste of your time. You're just learning improperly what the map is going to feel like and what Naga Siren does. You just need to go into the 900 CS challenge with Naga and just separate your illusions and get a feel. Because none of this has to do with hero to hero interaction. Like none of this is like specific to games. The only thing that you'll have to learn to, like, gauge is if there's a hero pushing a creep wave and you want your illusions to farm it, how many illusions you need to send, whether or not they can farm it at all, and that's something that you'll learn eventually, but you're not- it's not gonna matter if you're not actually separating your illusions. Um, min-maxing is pretty impossible if you just run around with your three illusions all game. Yeah, I mean, like I said, past that, uh, this mid-game area, like, it's just not much to say. Uh, you're now separating your illusions, okay. So you're like kind of- no, you're just sending them all together. So the way the Black Dragon works is that it does splash damage, and the splash damage is based on how much damage the primary target takes. So if you are killing the Ancient Black Dragon and it is hitting an illusion, it's effectively doing like 4x damage to you and all of your illusions. So the one creep that you want to make sure your hero is tanking is the Black Dragon. Stop walking four units into units that clap, or like use spells. So, like, this is a situation where you're supposed to splinter your farm because there's clearly farm in front of you and clearly farm behind you. So the halfway point is this creep camp right here. Your hero and illusion can go back to here while your other illusions can go over here. So these moments where it's very clear when you look at it in pause that it's, uh, there's, this, like, two different ways that you want to go with your hero, um, in order to farm. That's what illusion heroes do. That's what summons heroes do. This is where they come into play. It's very important to notice these moments when I talk about them and then feel them in your games. And then this is when you send two illusions down the creep wave and your illusion and a hero here and then go back to the triangle. That's going to effectively allow you to like clear this camp, clear this wave, and walk back to the triangle all at once. Very few heroes have this luxury, but you're just playing the game like you're a normal hero and running down the lane. Like this is what a normal carry would do, right? But like, this isn't correct. You know, you're supposed to be clearing three different areas at once. Your job as Naga Siren is to have like 200 CS at 20 minutes. That is your job. So sending like three illusions and your hero at a wave and like harassing the lifestealer, that's not what your job is. Your job is to clear that creep wave with illusions while your hero and another illusion are farming camps and that lifestealer is casually taking damage against your illusions. You're not trying to bully people out of areas. You're trying to farm that area way more than any other hero would be able to farm that area and anybody who's also farming that area is inconvenienced by your illusions. This will win the war of attrition. You will farm more than they do. They have to spend time hitting your illusions and taking damage from them rather than spending time going to get more jungle creeps or pushing more creep waves. So you're just uh, completely missing the ball on the way Naga likes to play. This is not a thing, what you're doing here. So here, like, same idea. Summon illusions here. Like, right now, send two of them here. You and your hero here. These two, after they kill the small camp, would go to the medium, then the big camp, and your hero would run this way. So very overall, like, you're not pushing the limits with Naga, and I am imploring you to play private lobbies with bots until that is completely natural. And I would say you should start off not even against bots, you should literally play with nobody else in the lobby until you can do this in your sleep. Okay? No pun, pun intended playing Naga. In your f***ing sleep you should be able to make these micro movements. You're wasting your time with illusion heroes if the mechanics are not there. You're just wasting your time. Because everything else about like game decision making, itemization, matchups, everything only matters if these things are done properly. So you're sending them, I mean, yeah. So you're like getting slightly better about it now that you have Manta. Now that, uh, like you are doing two different areas on the map. But yeah, you gotta be more of a visionary. You're just sending all three of your illusions to the same place. Yeah, man, I highly I encourage you to to watch, like, one of my Naga Siren games, one of Skeeter's Naga Siren games, literally any Immortal player's Naga Siren games, make it very clear visually what I'm telling you to do with your illusions here, because every player will do it, and just know that sending three illusions to one place is, like, not an acceptable level of micro. It's not one of those things where you're gonna, like, graduate 
from this level of micro. I want you to understand that the level of micro that's like bare minimum is that you are trying to send two illusions by themselves to camps. You know what I mean? Like you're trying to separate your illusions. You're like doing the right thing, but it's like not correct. Efficiency wise, you're not clearing the, cle the creeps because you're randomly AFKing illusions or like randomly sending them to like the slightly wrong spot or the wrong pathing. It's like, I want you to be separating yourself from illusions right here and then miss microing when they go to camps. That's like an acceptable level of miss microing. That's like standard uh, learning curve, learning process where, you know, it happens, you're going to get the hang of it eventually. But the idea of just not separating from your illusions and not sending them places is like not an acceptable degree of mismicroing, okay? Because it's not that you're failing to micro, you're literally not trying, which I'm not saying you're going into these games thinking I'm not going to try. But what I'm saying is this is not actually teaching you anything in regards to microing. You're just hitting creeps as Naga. You're not pushing your limits. You're not understanding how this hero wants to play the map. You're not like basically doing what this hero specifically does, okay? So it's like your farming patterns would make sense on literally every other carry in the game that doesn't have illusions. So you're not like adjusting to the way illusion heroes, summons heroes, they want to play. So I need you, if you're going to branch into these heroes, totally fine going into this replay that you don't understand this. I need that to be the sole focus of your gameplay. That is all that matters. Where are you splintering your farm and sending your illusions the opposite way and clear and uh, having the max area of the map being taken by yourself. So like in this case, for instance, um, just to help you a few more tips, it only takes two illusions max, maybe even one to clear this creep wave coming up. Whenever you do this um, with your illusions, you should A, click them down the lane, like A, click them further, like all the way to this tower. And then what that is going to allow you to do is it's gonna give you like 10 seconds where you're not microing these illusions because you don't actually want them to hit the tower but you do want them to keep going down the lane. So then you're going to walk your hero over here, get yourself to the neutral camp. So what's going to happen is these illusions were A-click to this tower, like A-clicked behind the tower. Don't actually A-click the tower itself because then they'll go attack the tower um, instead of the creep wave in front of them. So you A-click like behind this tower, then you send your hero to the small camp, right? And then once your hero gets to the small camp, then you go back to these illusions that were already running down the lane, right? And you right-click them to here. And what's going to happen is they'll then cut the next wave in time. So the way you're doing it is these illusions aren't going to clear the next wave is what's going to happen. See, they're just not going to clear anything. So now you actually have to stay top for an extra set of illusion spawning to clear this creep wave. When these illusions... Okay, so you're not even clearing the creep wave at all. And then these illusions could have gone over here. So yeah, this is... um. I'm telling you that like uh, for you to proceed as Naga Siren, it's totally fine if you want to practice her. But you, like, you're completely wasting your time if you don't just go into private lobbies and do this. It can take, it, like, the thing is, it didn't take me that many games to get used to Naga because I have a ton of practice on Illusion Heroes, right? I have a ton of practice doing the motions that I'm telling you to do. So then all I had to figure out what to do was how do I do it on Naga Siren? But I need you to figure out how to do the motions of an Illusion Hero in general. So for anybody who's in a similar spot to you that's like kind of looking to add an illusion summons heavy hero to their pool, you have to do this. Like you are completely wasting your time in these games. You could play a hundred games like this and you will not get very much better. Like you would improve more doing this like 25 times in a private lobby with literally nobody in it than like a hundred games of playing like this. You would get way better. Um, that really is all my tips because what I'm going to say to you is like, you're you're in a really hard Naga Siren game. So like playing like a 1K is not going to work. And I don't really care about the heroes in this game at the end of the day. What I'm saying is like, I do need you to acknowledge like Tinker and Sand King are like very good against your hero. So it's like, I don't really care that you lost this game. I care about the fact that I'm seeing not proper attempts at shoving out or like uh, pushing your limits as an illusion hero. So I gave you like four or five really crucial things to think about. Think about when illusions can start clearing camps. Think about having illusions tank for you at camps early game. Think about not sending three creeps or three units into the camps with centaurs and hellbear smashers. Make sure your hero is the main thing tanking the dragon. Make sure you understand that the Ancient Thunderhide, the Rhino, it, it, it does its slam for four units. 
So you can use two illusions plus your hero to do that camp. Make sure you think about times where you have farm in front of you and farm behind you. That's when you would send illusions one way and your hero the other. All these things combined, spend as much time as you need, grind it out without even any heroes in the game, because acknowledge that there's very little hero interaction when you're doing any of this. And uh, we'll see what happens. Good luck, man. I hope that helped.